Well, when you think of it, it's not just that she's been a minister, first minister for eight years. She's been a government minister since 2007. Um, and it's funny, right, because she's 52. Um, and in political terms, that's not really old, <clears throat> but she's been doing this for 30 to 40 years, so basically all her life. And um, there's certainly all the pressures that it comes with it, but actually the big thing is what to do with the independence issue. And, and that's the topic that is actually a problem for the SNP at the moment and certainly a problem for her. They're blocked on how to progress the issue. So if you want an, you know, an overall issue of what's going on here, that's, that's one of the topics. That's probably the biggest one. And, and all the, go ahead, I was going to say all the stuff about, about, you know, being first minister and facing a lot of scrutiny and negativity, that's going to be wearing as well. And if you don't, you know, if you don't reflect on that in politics, <clears throat> um, and some people don't, um, mm. that's, that's, that's a, that's a, that can be a problem because people can hang on. Yes, indeed. And uh, we've seen two w women leaders in Jacinda Ardern and Nicola Sturgeon almost come to the same conclusion. And also talking about COVID, have, you know, that must have been incredibly stressful and draining. But, you know, if we do look at the independence referendum, and this is such an interesting one, she, she said she, she wanted to give the party the right to decide on a direction for independence without her clear convictions, and it was really her conviction that continued to drive this, it would seem. Um, I'm not sure it's that. It's, it's the strategy, right? <clears throat> so how do you do this, um, knowing that it's, it's difficult? <clears throat> In fact, at the moment, there isn't a clear path to do it, and that's the problem. Um, and the SNP is about to have a conference to discuss these things towards the end of next month. And I'm not sure that was going to come up with any great conclusion. So if, if you want to, if you know, if you want to think, what was straight ahead in Nicola Surgeon's vision that was not going to be something easy to resolve? That was one of them, um, for sure, um, as well as all the, 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 the you know, the, the daily wear and tear of of, uh, of being FM and doing that for you know for eight years. It's a long time, and it's a it's a, re a relentless environment. The positive is. Um, and this is probably uh, obvious to people who know about what goes on at Parliament House, um, she decided to go. <clears throat> she didn't get removed by one of the party factions. Um, um, you know, um, it's, it's, you know, you're in a period now where nominations have opened for the next SNP leader who will probably be elected First Minister. <clears throat> but it's a fascinating transition that somebody's chosen to do it. Mm. Um, they haven't been, you know, they haven't been removed. They haven't been pushed. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, you know, last year, you know, we went through, you know, we've been through three prime ministers in the UK. Um, so there are ways to go and, and having the opportunity to choose rather than be the voters or anyone else. Is re that's really that's really interesting. And of course, in a sense, right, I had a feeling as quite a few journalists feeling, mm, but I didn't know it was going to happen, you know, yesterday. To say the feeling someone was the area, you could see it was quite a negative climate. You might think about it, but, you know, did I think it was going to happen yesterday? No. Mm. But... Mm, you know, people have got a feeling that something was going on and it's quite a wearing job and COVID in particular, dealing with the pandemic for two years, it's it's hard to explain that to Australians because it was so different here. Yes, you know, but, they, but nevertheless, it took a toll too, Peter, on our leaders. Our leaders. There's no question yeah. that it was, you yeah. know, just an unprecedented time. There would be literally daily press conferences, if not twice a day. So, you know, that must take a, a toll on your energy reserves. But, you know, so w let's talk, you know, you've studied a lot this push for independence. What are the pathways for Scotland now, given that they've been knocked back several times by Westminster, um, not only on this kind of push? Is there a way forward? Yeah, but um, the, the problem is getting people in the SNP to think that through and agree with it. And in basic terms, you've got the You've got frustration over people wanting it to happen quickly, but not quite sure how that's going to go, and then realising actually it's going to end up being a referendum agreed by Westminster after a Holyrood majority at some stage in the future. But that needs the other side to play, OK? And they might not play. They don't want to play now, and so they might not do in the future. So, so, the, so the pathway is not certain, and that's a problem because people want certainty, mm. and they want something sooner they don't want to know it will be in 10 years. They want it, you know, in the next in the next year, the next five minutes for some of them. So, so that's the that's the problem. And 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 the FM's difficulty has been managing all that. 
Um, and that's very difficult, managing very different hopes and expectations. Yeah. I'm interested in your thoughts on what it actually means for the, con the, the ruling Conservative Party uh, not having that, uh, that presence um, sort of on their side of politics. Well, all the opposition parties will be quite happy <clears throat> um, because they've seen somebody formidable who's probably raised the SNP vote at election after election by quite a percentage level. Um, and been credible to their voters as well as their own. That now that now that she's gone or going, <clears throat> um, they'll see that as an advantage. So they'll now sit back and think, what does this mean? Can we? What does it mean for our election strategies? And so that period is fascinating. You're a, a dynamic period where you're not quite sure who's going to be the new SNP leader, who's going to be the new FM, and how all that kind of stuff plays out. But there's remember, this isn't an election year. No. And that's important. So it's slightly out of the election cycle. And we do have surprise shock UK general elections, but um, I'm not sure there's going to be one this year. So there's a bit of political space and time for everyone to figure out what to do. Well, watch this space. Great to have you on. Thanks so much. Thanks, Beverly.